What's up guys, it's Josh from Carpet Empire here making a video on my most recent trip to Anaheim, California. So let's get into it. We are going to be covering my trip uh, to the Bush Road Championship Series. Um, or I guess technically not the Bush Road Championship Series, but the uh, Bush Road Spring Fest um, in Anaheim, California. I went there this past weekend, and uh, it was honestly a great trip, great experience. Everything all around great. I can't really say anything bad about it. Um, I do, however, want to cover uh, my days there and kind of give you guys uh, a sneak peek of what went on. So um, I actually ended up flying out uh, Friday morning because I went to go see Avengers on Thursday night at midnight. And then um, right after that, I like headed to the airport pretty much. Um, and I went on the flight. So my flight was like at 10 a.m. or something, um, Eastern Standard Time. So I got to Cali around probably two um want to give a shout out to uh my boy cameron uh he works with um i'm forgetting what the what the card shop name is in texas but uh also matt get in um and then the close buds and all that stuff so uh shout out to cam uh he was on the phone with me because i actually like lost my passport in the airport so that was pretty awful but uh luckily someone found it and they looked in the passport and I was sitting by baggage claim and they actually walked by and was like, hi, are you Josh Stallworth? And I was like, yeah. And then uh, they were able to give me my passport. So that was kind of crazy that they just recognized me from finding my passport. Um, but yeah, shout out to Cam uh, all, and shout out to a lot of people who made this trip fun, like Dominic Manalo. Um, Dominic is a, pretty much a Cali regular. I always see when I go there. Um, makes things fun. He's like one of the top traders in Card 5 Vanguard. You guys know that. Uh, Nikki Goldman from PPG. Um, he is pretty cool uh, to interact with. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not worthy of, of the Goldman. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. On a real note, though, um, Nikki is really cool. I always enjoy seeing Nikki um, kind of sharing insight with him on decks and stuff like that. Um, and him giving me his perspective on things because it really does help me uh, shape up the way that I play the game as well because there's always something that someone else sees that you're not going to see. So that was pretty cool. Um, so Friday, um, I pretty much get to the hotel. I check in. I wait for uh, my teammate to get in town, uh, John Howard. Uh, so first of all, shout out to him. He came like all the way from Philadelphia uh, just to be on my team. So that was pretty baller of him because I was really in like a weird bad scenario um, at the last moment where I was trying to find teammates and then I had a team and then one of my teammates dropped out on me because he works at Universal Studios in Cali and they wouldn't let him off work and uh, just a bunch of craziness happens but we did get a team solidified. Um, shout out to uh, James Chung, my other teammate who lives in California as well. So I had actually two different teams uh, one for premium, one for standard. So my standard team was me, uh, John um, Howard, and James Chung. Uh, you can see a picture of us over here somewhere. Um, so we did pretty well. We ended up making top eight. Um, and I kind of just wanted to explain um, how, you know, things went throughout the day or whatnot. Uh, so I have it pulled up here. Um, and I can tell you guys actually exactly how it went because I was uh, keeping track. So um, basically, uh, we go to the regionals on Saturday um, and we there's 266 teams. So that was the thing. Uh, so we started round one and we end up fighting. So I'll just go um, A, B, C. So in both, uh, both teams, I was player B. So when I mentioned B, that was always what I played. Um, a for standard was James Chung. And C for standard was uh, John Howard. So um, I was playing Murakumo. Um, James, our A player, was playing Deleters, like a type of like superior ride 
um, deleters thing using Swords Child and the deleter stuff to delete your Vanguard. Um, and then our uh, C teammate, uh, Jonathan Howard, was playing Neo Nectar, uh, which was like my Neo Nectar deck because John wasn't like that experience with Standard. He's mainly a premium player. So let's get right into that. Um, so round one, we end up fighting uh, Neo Nectar, Murakumo, OTT. Um, I'm not sure how James's game like went down, like because I didn't have a lot of time to watch that game. I was very focused on getting my headspace right because it was the first round. So uh, James won his. Um, John also won his. Um, I finished my game first. I was against the Murakumo matchup. Um, I mean, it wasn't really hard per se. Um, it's just that I feel like my opponent didn't really play optimally. Um, there was a time where he could have rode up uh, to, you know, Shiryuki, but he decided to stay on Zambaku for a turn just to lock me out. And uh, I didn't think that that was a particularly smart option for him to do, uh, but he did it anyway. So I just ended up winning that game. Um, round two, we 3-0 our opponents again. We played against Link Joker, Shadows, Mega Colony. Um, the Shadow Paladin player that I played against, um, I actually had Zambaku in like a really good hand um, from the start. And when he got to grade three ride, he went first. So when he got to grade three, he rode Dark Dictator. So I was like, oh man, like people still run this card. So then I was able to just lock him out and then win the game from there. Uh, pretty quick, pretty easy. Um, round three, we 3 0 our opponents again. Uh, we played against Shadow Paladin, Murakumo, and Royal Paladin. Uh, so I played against Murakumo again. Again, the mirror match is not hard. You just got to play smart. Um, you know, get your advantage with the rear guards and use Shiryuki when you can sparingly. Uh, round four, we end up playing. Um, we end up playing against uh, Team our Third Wheel. This is the team that ended up winning um, the whole standard event with uh, Bailey K on it. Um, I'm forgetting the third person's name. Don't smite me. And China, um, Bailey's girlfriend. So I actually ended up playing in China. She was the B player. Uh, she was playing Angel Feather. It was a really, really tight game, really close net game. It was actually the only game that I dropped all day. Um, and then I later thought about it and I was like, or post the game, I thought about it and I was like, I didn't have to drop that game. Um, but basically, both James and John on either side of me had lost before our game was done. Um, so we played it out still, but at the final turn that I was going to attack her, I was on Zangeki, um, the one Zangeki that I run in my deck. And uh, basically, for many turns, I've been pressuring her by like uh, making her guard with zeros or taking them. And so on the final turn that I planned on killing her, um, I had... Uh, a full board except for one excel circle that was open and I had a left arrestor and a right arrestor and a grade zero in my hand and uh, I didn't have a left or right arrestor on board already so I was thinking about whether I should play left arrestor for my hand uh, to gain the 5,000 on Zangeki or rather I should play the right arrestor for my hand and um, and gain the crit so basically I ended up playing the right arrestor, but that was a mistake if I like think back on it, just because I should have played the left arrestor just to give power. Um, she was at four damage. I didn't really calculate in for her hitting a damage trigger, which was stupid of me, but I attacked on my rear guard and she hit a heal trigger. Um, and although she didn't heal, she did add the power to her vanguard, so she was a 22k base. So I attacked with my Zangeki that had a 8k booster, so it was 20k with a crit. Uh, she couldn't guard it because she didn't have any zeros in her hand. Uh, so she couldn't guard anything else, but everything on my board was below 20k in columns. So when she checked the damage trigger, I actually attacked with my Vanguard and I didn't check any triggers. And I just had to attack her rear guards and pass turn, which was really unfortunate for me because I asked her post game like how many zeros she had um, to be able to guard uh, anything else. And she said that she had none. So if I would have just played the left arrestor to gain the 5k, my Vanguard column would have been 25k and I would have been able to uh, overcome her base power of her hitting a trigger um, and won that one, which would have made me 10-0 for the day, but uh, it was it was fair and square. I made a misplay, and uh, she played really, really stellar as well, um, so shout out to them, and they were really, really nice and friendly. It's the first time that I met them, um, and yeah, they were also wearing hoodies that say I eat, I eat ass, so <laughs> 
that was a thing I never noticed until like the very end of the regionals when uh, my one of my teammates mentioned it to me. But uh, yeah, so they were really, really cool. Um, I hope that I get to fight them again someday. They were really, really cool. Uh, moving on to round five. We ended up being 4-1 after this round because we won. Uh, so me and James won and John lost. So it was uh, Deleters versus Angels, which James won. Me versus OTT. I can't express enough how much of a stomp uh, OTT is for Murakumo. Um, when you're not playing against a player that knows the matchup that well. Um, so there's a lot of people that play OTT that kind of just give in to the fact of, uh, oh, OTT auto loses to Murakumo. Um, and they don't auto lose. You just have to play smart and know what your deck strengths are versus Murakumo strengths, what you can do. Um, a lot of people have been running like uh, Weather Girl Soda. That's a thing as well. Um, so just to block like Zangeki turns and stuff like that or make your protect markers not useless. So that's really good. Um, you just have to know what you're doing. But uh, not that the OTT player that I was playing against didn't know what he was doing. He just wasn't running uh, the optimal build for fighting Murakumo, in my opinion. So uh, I just won that one quite easily. Um, and then uh, they had a C player that was playing Spikes, and John lost to them. Um, so then round six, we go 5-1 uh, after this round. We were playing D Police, Gold Paladin, OTT. Uh, John lost the OTT player, but uh, I won against the gold player and uh, James won against the deep police player. Um, it was actually kind of funny when I looked over and saw deep police versus uh, the leader because I realized how bad of a matchup that is for deep police. Like they can never, if they can't ride, they can't reach uh, the 30k threshold that they need to reach or like the, even the 45k threshold that they need to reach. So it's a really bad matchup for them. Um, Round seven, we end up uh, being 6-1 after that round. We fought Shadow Paladin, Angels, and Narukami. Uh, we 3 0 them. Again, it was another Angel Feather player, and I had actually like just learned a little bit from uh, my match during China, or uh, my match during China, my match against China, and uh, I just like won that one really easily, really quick, um, just because I was like, Angels, fighting Angels was fresh on my mind. Uh, then after round eight, we end up going 7-1, uh, we, me and James won ours and, um, John lo lost his. So we were playing against, uh, Murakumo, which is a really easy matchup for James, uh, with the leaders. Me, I was playing Neonectar. It was a close match because Neonectar columns are ridiculous. And even if, uh, I stun their Vanguard, like if they're on their second Cecilia already, it doesn't really matter because they're still like adding so much pressure to me. And then, uh, the Narukami player won against, uh, John, like I said. Uh, then we wait for the top eight to be announced. We figure out that we made top eight. We actually got sixth place, which was really, really invigorating. Felt really good. So then, um, is where the kind of dun, dun, dun moment happens, uh, where a lot of people heard about this this weekend. We actually went into, uh, top eight and we're starting to our, do our deck checks and we do our deck checks and me and John, um, who's playing my Neo Nectar deck, uh, passes our deck checks and then uh, James actually, like, I guess I won't say fails his deck check, but he basically, um, the judges had stated, like, he basically wrote his deck list in a way where he wrote three of for a card instead of four, a card that he was running four of. So basically on his deck list, it counted as 49 cards when his deck was supposed to be 50 cards, even though the deck in front of them was physically 50 cards. Um, they basically told us that, uh, via the regulations and rules that James's deck was an illegal deck, so they would have to give us a round loss. Um, and since there was only top eight remaining and like onwards, we basically had to get an automatic loss into top eight um, on James's half. And so that would mean that me and John would have had to win our matches to continue onwards. And if we did, then James would be back in for top four and onwards. But basically... That put us in a really, really bad situation because John, like I said, wasn't as experienced in standard and doesn't know the matchups as well, doesn't play standard often. Um, so I already knew that we were in like an incredibly bad situation. So we get into top and we find out that player A, who James was supposed to be facing, was playing to Murakumo. So that probably would have just been a stomp for James. So we probably would have uh, definitely made it into top four. But I mean, I can't say like, you know, Vanguard is Vanguard, triggers are triggers and... 
everything in between that can happen. So I can't really say whether or not we would have made it, but it would have been nice if uh, James could actually play. Um, player B was playing OTT. I just stomped him really quickly. Um, it wasn't even really a, a matchup. Like, I, I had so much uh, cards in hand in defense. Like, it just was a really bad game for the OTT player. Um, so then it basically, since I finished my game really quick and James got an auto loss, then it came down to John, uh, who was fighting a um, Gear Chronicle player. And since he doesn't really know the matchup, he was kind of like guarding things too early. And then later when like the big stuff came, like Mystery Flare with extra crit and all that stuff, um, he was forced to two to pass it. And then basically the um, Gear Chronicle player just checked triggers and went all Vanguard, um, knowing that he could check three times. So uh, John just basically, uh, he six damage healed, but then he had one more damage to take and that one wasn't a heal. So we ended up losing that one. I was like, Anyone that you asked that was there will tell you that I was incredibly upset by this fact because uh, my whole thing is like I like to lose fairly, if you will say. Like, even getting trigger sacked to me is losing fairly because that's within the parameters of the game. But, like, just the whole like us like being already down around like into top eight was just like devastating, especially when you know that like it's something that would have been an advantage for you and not like a disadvantage. So, that was kind of really, really crappy, especially because in Atlanta, like, I had just come off the Atlanta event where our team had gotten premium top eight and then lost in top eight. And in Team League, they don't really give you anything but the free fight promos for going top eight, which is kind of like weird and dumb because you could just drop from the whole tournament and just play in the free, uh, the free fights and get the same prize as what top eight got. So they didn't even give out top eight mats or anything this year. So it was kind of just really, really bad. Um, but before I talk about the night that happened after that, I actually forgot to talk about Friday night. So shout out to Vision Workshop or something like that. Um, sorry if I'm like butchering the name or if I don't know the full name of the card shop. Um, but basically, uh, we went to a card shop to practice. They actually had a local team tournament, um, at the Vision, uh, workshop, card shop. And so, uh, it was led by, um... Give me just a second. It was led by a guy named uh, Quinlan uh, Cantrell. So really, really cool, solid guy. Um, a lot of you that live in California probably know him. Um, he's really, really cool. I had a, a lot of conversations with him, and it was just an overall really enjoyable experience uh, to be inside their store. I'll put up like a uh, quick little video that I did on this side um, of what it was like to be in their store. Uh, but yeah, they had like a half like esports, half card game type thing. So it was really, really cool. Uh, this is also where I fought um, Ken Cheong uh, for the first time. Uh, shout out to him. He was pretty much the one of the best players I played all weekend in standard. Um, I played against him in the final round of that tournament, that local tournament. And uh, I ended up going undefeated in the tournament. But uh, Ken definitely gave me like a run for my money. It was really, really close. It basically came down to like a pentagonal magus, uh, him riding pentagonal magus and then attacking me. I had a two to pass it and he checked five no triggers, uh, non triggers. So um, I got really lucky there because uh, I definitely thought he was going to get it. And uh, yeah, we ended up getting like a couple boxes and uh, like a mat for our prize or something like that, which was really, really cool. Um, I really, really enjoyed being at the card shop. So um, yeah, shout out to um, Quinlan uh, Cantrell, shout out to Dominic. Manalo, and shout out to my two teammates, uh, John Howard and um, James Chung for playing with me. Also, I wanted to say um, throughout the weekend, shout out to all of the people that came up to me and were like so excited to see me, um, wanted autographs, wanted a picture, um, all that stuff. Like, obviously, it's uh, one of those things that I don't really think about a lot where I travel to events and people haven't seen me in their state before or something like that. And so it was really, really cool to be able to do connect with my community or connect with people who watch me a lot and they tell me, oh, I love this video of yours or I really, really liked this video of yours or this video helped me back in the day or this video is the reason why I topped or won a tournament or something like that. Just knowing like the influence that I bring to people um, was really like uh, warm hearting or heart, heartwarming, can't even speak. But yeah, it was really heartwarming. Um, so thank you guys, uh, all of you guys who came up to me 
and uh, said anything to me at all. Uh, I really appreciated that. But um, going into the night after uh, day one, so I go back to the hotel. I'm just like completely not in the state of mind. I'm like distraught. I actually like after we lost, like I sat in the same spot like where we lost uh, while my two teammates got up and like went off somewhere. Um, I actually stayed in the same spot like where I lost or where we lost in top eight. And I just like kind of sat there because I couldn't believe that we lost that way. Um, it was really, really disheartening for me. But uh, I basically ended up going back to the hotel. Kind of, you know, my mind was in shambles for the entire night. Like I was just really upset. So I decided to uh, start working on my premium deck, which I was playing Murakumo for premium as well. Um, and I had also played it in Atlanta, so I kind of already knew the changes that I wanted to be made to the deck, what I wanted to do. So I just like sat, relaxed, um, watched Vanguard, watched the Vanguard episode, uh, ate some food, uh, got some ramen, and pretty much just relaxed for the remainder of the night just so that I could get my mind right for Sunday morning. So boom, um, I wake up Sunday morning, me and John get ready. Uh, we actually head down to, oh, I also forgot to mention that on Saturday, um, our Sunday teammate also came to practice with us, um, Jacob, uh, Jacob Harden from PBG. So uh, he's a really cool guy. It was actually the first time that I was meeting him. So I was very, very nervous um, about how he was going to do and such because essentially to me it was like getting a random teammate because I didn't really know him or know what he's capable of play-wise. So um, thankfully, he ended up being really, really solid um, and Shout out to him. Uh, he did really, really well in premium on Sunday. But moving into premium on Sunday, uh, speaking of that, we actually... Uh, I can pull this up here. Uh, we actually ended up making top eight again. Uh, so at the beginning... Be, be, uh, can't even speak. At the beginning of the day um, on Sunday, I basically just uh, enter the venue. I see Jacob... And the PBG group, I talked to them for like mm, maybe a couple minutes. And then I go upstairs to do my deck list. Like I pretty much like secluded myself. Like people were still walking up to me, like talking to me, um, asking me questions or, you know, wanting me to sign something or, or like all that. But I pretty much like secluded myself to get myself in the zone because that's what I do. Because if I go into the tournament with a toxic mentality, I'm going to play toxically if that makes sense not like towards my opponent but like i'm not going to make the most optimal decisions if i'm not in an optimal state of mind um that's just my opinion on it so i pretty much was like sitting down getting my head right um i also was like so paranoid about the saturday deck list thing that i had a judge um deck check all of all three of my uh teammates decks um or rather my two teammates and i um, I had a judge, um, deck check our decks so that nothing would go wrong, uh, if we happen to make it into top eight, which we did. So really, really good. Um, so on premium on Saturday, there was 172 teams. So that's cool. Um, a lot of the teams were, uh, ghost teams. Um, I'm not sure exactly how many, but after first round where they asked everyone to like stand up if they didn't have their opponent, it was like a very large amount of people that stood up because people had basically just entered to get the promotional marker um, and then they just didn't want to play in the event. So uh, round one, we actually ended up uh, sweeping our opponent because they didn't show up. Um, so it, round one, we got some ghosts. Um, so that made us 1-0. Um, round two... We end up winning that round. Um, I actually lost that round uh, to Nubatama, which is ironic because later I end up losing to that in uh, in finals. So that felt pretty bad. But um, I found out that in against Nubatama, I kind of have like a bad matchup. But at the same time, I wasn't playing against them correctly. And I learned this post event when I was talking to uh, Nikki Goldman. So again, shout out to Nikki for giving me his insight on how to fight certain decks and stuff like that because a lot of the times like like someone can say something that I don't see I'm not perfect I'm just a human being so um I can I still have just as much to learn about the intricacies of Vanguard as everyone else uh so all you people who think that I'm like already like top level pro player whatever like I might do really well in tournaments but that doesn't mean I don't have 
like just as much to learn as other people um so i try to like keep myself humble and uh try to like teach myself that there's always something for you to learn there's like you're never at the top 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 where you know everything nothing can be said to you you're perfect you're godlike like no like that's not a fact in any card game like there's always interactions you don't know about there's always things that can catch you off guard um there's always you know there's hundreds of card choices in the game since the game came out six years ago um so that's premium format in a nutshell like it's everything that's come out combined so you don't want to go into it thinking you know everything that you could possibly hit be hit with because you don't so learning matchups is really important but also keeping yourself humble is really important as well i would say to doing well but um round two we end up fighting chaos breaker nubatama ott geese um the chaos breaker player was playing our a player which i should say sorry that um my a player was john howard from day one uh i was the b player and our c player was jacob harden who was playing gold paladin and john our a player was playing Ange. so um we get abc chaos nubatama ott gize so john played against uh chaos breaker incredibly easy matchup for um for Ange, like the chaos breaker player was really really salty the entire time like he was just like saying things to us that or saying things rather to john that we're not really sportsman like but it's because he was just really salty that he got Ange, which i don't know why he wouldn't expect to play Ange going into an event where you know a trial deck just came out where they got 10k v series triggers and so there's pretty much like an Ange in every team or something like that so i don't know but like the chaos breaker player was just really salty um i lost to the nubatama player on their team which felt really bad but then uh jacob won his game against uh ott geese so they were actually able to put me on their back um past that point and uh carry me to the next round so round three we end up uh jacob ends up being the one that loses this time uh so we went uh win win loss so uh john wins against uh time leap gears with his Ange deck i went against narukami uh basically the way that the narukami matchup went is uh i played really safe early and then i basically just like flooded my board um with a bunch of stuff and i used all my shiryuki skills to make his vanguard go minus like 25k power or something like that and then i attacked him like nine times and he just died um so i knew i couldn't let the game go on too long because then i would have to deal with stuff like the gba um and all that stuff and also the longer i let the game go on the more chance he has more heals in his hand which can actually hurt my deck because um i didn't want to do the infinite loop on him even though i had the pieces because his g guard could actually interrupt me so i went for the uh brute the uh, brute force play as, uh instead and so uh that ended up clinching the game for me um jacob played against uh kagura overlord don't really know what happened in his game but he ended up losing um round four we go win win loss again uh so jacob loses again uh but this time he lost to Ange, which is completely understandable because Ange and gold paladin are like the same type of deck if he doesn't like high roll it's like depends on who goes first and who gets the stronger plays and stuff like that so jacob ended up losing but i ended up winning against shadow paladin before he even got to stride um he was playing luard and so i just pressured him really really early with my skills um everything in between like shiryuki going minus 10k to his vanguard like i pushed him to five um before he even got to three and then he had to guard stuff while he was on two so basically when he got to grade three he rode to grade three and then he didn't um he actually didn't even have a way to stride um he had g guarded uh with the uh the ritual g guard that's like not ritual g guard but um bro knock the one that checks your top five and guard with every grade one and when he did that he ripped five triggers off the top so that was really unfortunate for him because he was at ritual zero so he couldn't even stride um and then i just ended up going into my next year yuki stride the next turn and just killing him uh before he even got to stride um john was playing against gold palette in that round he won and then uh like i said jacob lost to Ange. uh round five we have a clean sweep we go um Ange, angel gize novas uh so john was playing the mirror match against Ange. he wins i was playing against angel gize for those of you who don't know like the murakumo especially my build versus gize is just an a stomp like an auto win like i don't see any way i should ever be losing to gize players um even if they do reach gize like 
I have an infinite loop that I can do that gets over 30k power. So there's no way that I should really lose, especially because they can't hit damage triggers and uh, power themselves out of it. So very, very good. Um, Jacob was playing against Nova Grappler. Uh, I think he literally just wrecked the Nova Grappler player. I think he high rolled and then he just got it. Uh, round six, we're actually playing against Team PBG, which was consisted of uh, John uh, to Hayden uh nikki goldman and i don't know the name of the third player because i don't really know him personally uh so my bad for that but um john to Hayden was uh playing uh our john um so they were both playing Ange. uh their match went super long and then uh, because of a small misplay by john uh other john just ended up winning in the end uh because of uh, his tirua play so they were tiroing back to back to back and I think um, Arjon like, lost a little steam when he went into the GBA instead of Atirua. Uh, but yeah, so that happened. And then I played against Nikki. Um, Nikki got the high roll. He's playing golds. Uh, however, he did not have the bow mains. But when he did get to his grade 3 turn, he had like a godlike hand as far as like grade 3 turn. He had like double Sagamore, um, Raven Hair, Ezel, all that stuff. So he got like a bunch of Excel markers. And I just couldn't hold up to the pressure. Um, and my deck's not built to hold up to early pressure like that. So I just died. And then, uh, Jacob actually won his match, uh, because he high rolled against their Nubatama player and then he double crit the Nubatama player while he's on three. So, uh, yeah, pretty disgusting on Jacob's part, but unfortunately we weren't able to win. And we also got down paired that round. So, um, Nikki's team was actually X1 before they fought us and we were undefeated. So losing to them actually dragged us down a significant amount, uh, which sucked. But uh, going to round seven, we basically got our head straight because we knew that we had to win, uh, win, win, win to get into top eight. Uh, so we actually do uh, sweep the team that we fought against. Um, J uh, John Howard uh, playing Ange, he played against the Murakumo loop or like a form of it that wasn't the same as mine. And he had played against mine a lot. Um, and we both kind of like thought that mine was the better variant. Um, so... People don't, didn't really have my variant um, there, even if they were playing the Murakumo loop. So I played John a bunch with uh, my variant, and my variant still kind of loses to Ange. Um, Slash has to get a little bit lucky against Ange, so he had a good matchup going into that. Um, I actually fought against Spike Brothers, which she kind of scared me because I thought she was doing the GB8 rush build, but it turns out that she wasn't. So then I just like uh, minus her Vanguard like 25k or 30 or something like that, and I just flooded her with attacks and. That was that and then jacob played against the pale moon loop he got the high roll and just destroyed the pale moon loop player before he could do anything i think um and then we go to top eight we did our deck checks um so we actually passed our deck checks so i was really really happy about that going into top eight um we fought a team that had aqua force uh for player a spike brothers for player b and ott for player c uh so the aqua force player loses to john um, and he actually stride into Commander Thalvis when he apparently meant to go into like Alexandros or something. And then they had called Judge and the Judge told him that he couldn't switch strides back because it was too late um, and stuff like that. So I think John just destroyed him after that. Um, I was playing against Spike Brothers. Um, not much to say. Like he pretty much just like did normal Spike Brother things, which like doesn't really affect me that heavily. I'm able to just take damage and then you know, go after him pretty heavy. Um, but I did rush him really, really hard. And so I put him to five before uh, he was even on grade three. So when he got to grade three, um, he strode into Agrius and I looked at my hand and I had a dual weapon, a Metamorphox and a Tomba. So I was like, if he doesn't heal out of this, I just get one of my infinite loops off uh, by putting the uh, dual weapon on the Excel circle and then he can't do anything about it. So I basically, he attacked me. Uh, he didn't get any heal triggers. And then I set up my uh, dual weapon loop and it's pretty much a wrap from there. Um, then uh, Jacob lost to OTT in top eight because he was playing against um, a girl that was playing like Magus, Magus uh, Ichitom. So basically she ended up getting the, uh, the silent deer double Tom play on uh, Jacob and she put double crit on top from the deer. So Jacob just couldn't block it, um, and he just ends up losing that one. So thank God that me and John won our ones that round. Uh, going to top 
four, we just sweep uh, the enemy team. It was Ange versus Ange, me versus OTT Gize, and Jacob versus ZTB. Um, the ZTB player lost really fast to Jacob, I assume, because Jacob high rolled and cheesed him. Um, and then I was playing OTT Gize, like I said. I was really, really happy to be playing against Gize because Gize doesn't really do anything against me. And it's really, really hard for them to actually win. Um, then uh, John was playing against Ange and he just won that one as well. Uh, so then we go into finals and finals was such high pressure. Like I was really uh, upset but proud about how it ended up going at the end. Um, so basically we end up fighting Ezel, Nubatama's Paleman Loop. So on this side of me, um, I have John Howard playing Ange versus their Ezel player. Their Ezel player high rolls and destroys John. Like John didn't even really get a chance to fight back. Then on the right side of me, we have Jacob, our Ezel player, versus their Paleman Loop player, and our Ezel player high rolls, Jacob, and then Jacob just destroys the Paleman Loop player. So then like all focus is like on me and uh, the Nubatama player that I was playing against. Um, it was really, really, really close. Um, in fact, I also like didn't realize like when I was going in for my final play to attack, um, I played a Shiryuki on the board and I played a stand trigger to target Shiryuki. And when I went into my deck, I only had one target for Shiryuki when I thought I had two. And if I had two, then uh, he would have lost the game. But unfortunately, I only had one, so I had to just call one out. And then um, I attacked, I got one stand trigger, uh, and so I wasn't able to clinch the game, and then he draws and then just strode into Rene. The only way that I could get out of it was like six damage healing, uh, but other than that, um, I should have just played the grade two game. Uh, when I was talking to Nikki after, uh, I figured out that I should have just played the grade two game. I haven't had a lot of matchup experience with my deck versus Nubatama. Because in Atlanta, when I fought Nubatama twice, I just opened up hand with the infinite loop and I just destroyed them on first stride without them even getting to do anything. So, um, yeah, that was a thing. But we ended up making second. So it wasn't all bad. It um, wasn't all terrible. It was a beautiful trip. Um, beautiful weather the entire time that we were there until Monday when I was leaving and it started like raining and acting stupid. But, uh, yeah, really, really uh, good, enjoyable time um, all around. I wanted to uh, shout out all the different parties one more time here at the end, uh, just so that I'm not missing anyone. Uh, so Cameron um, and his group, uh, Tristan, Ian, um, all really cool people. I always enjoy my time around them. They're just really, really funny, really cool to be around. Um, I want to thank... Uh, my teammates for both days, uh, John Howard, James Chung, um, and Jacob Harden, all of them gave their best effort, and I really couldn't ask for anything more. Obviously, the whole deck list thing happened, but um, honestly, I couldn't ask for, you know, better teammates um, because I feel like, I truly feel like that we could have won standard on day one um, if we hadn't had that happen to us, so... Um, that means that there was no, you know, issue with play. It was just with the deck list. So, um, couldn't be avoided. Everything happens for a reason. So, um, I just trying to view it that way, um, instead of viewing it negatively. So shout out to all my teammates. They all did the best they could, um, carried me at sometimes I carried them at sometimes it was an even, um, exchange. We're all a team. Uh, so I try not to, you know, hold anything against anyone, uh, because I definitely have my faults as well. Um, Shout out to Dominic Manalo and the Vision Group. Um, Dominic, really cool person to be around every single time that I'm in California. Super hospitable, super friendly. Um, I would suggest seeking him out if you're ever in California uh, for a regionals and you need cards or something like that. He can probably help you out. Um, Quinlan Cantrell and the whole Vision Group. Uh, Ken Cheung, um, all the people that I met at the Vision Card Shop. Like You guys were just amazing, great. Um, I actually like can say something about California uh, this past time that I can't really say about any other regionals that I've ever been to is that I didn't have to deal with any scum lord players like the entire weekend not Friday not Saturday not Sunday every single one of my opponents was really really uh really really respectful um and even if like one or two of them might have come off cocky 
it wasn't like the way that it would be on the East Coast where like hockey turned into, you know, being an asshole. Um, they were just like, oh, like really proud of their deck and obviously as hyped up as they should be if they get like a certain placing or something like that. So I completely understood that. Um, so, you know, shout out to everyone uh, that came up to me, that talked to me, that, you know, that we fought, that said, oh, I'm subscribed to your channel. Oh, I love your content. Oh, when are you doing, you know, a uh, video on, you know, the, the next set or whatever. Um, just thank you guys so, so much for supporting the channel and always giving me your best. And it just makes me want to always give you guys my best. So, um, yeah, with that being said, I think that's the wrap up to the weekend. So, you know, thank you uh, to all the different groups involved. Uh, also, shout out to Bailey's team, Team Third Wheel. They were really cool to me. And shout out to Nikki's team, uh, Team PPG. Uh, they did really well um, as well. And also, thank you for letting me borrow one of your lieges <laughs> to my team uh, in the form of Jacob. So, uh, Jacob did amazing. And uh, yeah, no, not much else I can say other than that. But uh, that will be the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed the video or if you're looking for my deck list that I used in this event, uh, be sure to check out my Patreon down below. Um, I'll be posting all of my card fight exclusive stuff there now, including like deck lists that are built by me and stuff like that. Um, other people's uh, will still be on my channel and stuff like that. But as for all the stuff that comes from directly me, I'm going to be like moving all that stuff over to my Patreon now. Um, just to like help things move forward with my channel and stuff like that. So um, sorry if you wanted to see the deck list uh, for free or something like that. But um, yeah, I just made a decision after thinking about it for a long time. And uh, I thought that it would be better if I just move it over there. So I have like actual premium content for the people that are supporting me on there. Um, so thank you guys for supporting me. Uh, there will be a full uh, deck list analysis and play and combos of both the standard and the premium deck that I used in the tournament to get sixth place, 9-1, um, and uh, top two in uh, premium. So I hope you guys uh, check those out if you can. Um, if not, no problem. Uh, I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace, guys.